Hi, I'm Dr. Evan Matthews. I'm going to be quickly showing you how to calculate R to R interval from an ECG and then how to get from R to R interval to heart rate. So this is something that uh, is done frequently in situations where there's an ECG present, obviously, so cardiac rehab centers, um, oftentimes in research um, and things of the such. Um, so let's go ahead and get right to it. Um, so we have a question here to help us frame this. So we have Tasha, who is 53 years old, had an electrocardiogram done. Um, electrocardiogram is the long word for ECG or EKG. They all mean the same thing. So she had an electrocardiogram done uh, as a routine health screening for her job as a police officer. All right. So this is something that happens all the time. Um, we want to know what her RR interval R is. Um, because she wants to know what her heart rate was and we need to calculate R to R interval in order to get heart rate first. Um, and there are other ways of getting heart rate from ECGs, um, but this is the most accurate. Um, so let's use this as an example ECG. Let's say this is her ECG here. Um, and what you do is you go to the ECG and you find where the R waves are. So I have um, one R wave marked here by this dotted purple line and another R wave marked here by this dotted purple line. But we have a couple more R waves as well that we could have used. And to be most accurate, you would want to do this whole thing for multiple R to R intervals in order to get an average value. But let's just do it for one. All right, so if we were to look at this, um, the distance from this R wave to this R wave, and calculate these tiny squares, these tiny red squares, not calculate, but count them, um, from one to the next, we got 17.5 millimeters. So each one of these squares is a millimeter. That's why it's called uh, millimeters for this value. All right, so we have 17.5 millimeters separating this dotted line on this R wave from this dotted line on that R wave. Um, and so we need to know how much time each of those millimeters is worth. So we can look at a diagram like this. Um, this is essentially what each of those blocks mean, um, both on the y-axis and the x-axis. The y-axis is just uh, different uh, waves, uh, different voltages. The x-axis, though, is time, which is what we care about in this situation. Um, so for every one small red block, um, so one millimeter wide, that is 0.04 seconds. Right? And you can just add those up. So if you have five of those, you would have five millimeters in 0.2 seconds. All right? um, so let's get back to our question though here. We now know that one millimeter is 0.04 seconds. Her R to R interval was 17.5 millimeters long, so all we need to do is multiply 17.5 times this value, so the 0.04 seconds, and we end up with 0.7 seconds as her R to R interval. So in other words, it took 0.7 seconds for a, a heartbeat to start and then for the next one to start. Um, and so if we want to get heart rate from that uh, 0.7 seconds for the R to R interval, we can simply uh, plug it into this formula, which is just 60 divided by the R to R interval. So again, in this circumstance, it was 0.7, and we end up with 85.7 beats per minute for her heart rate. Uh, so it's fairly straightforward, fairly easy to do, um, something that is uh, oftentimes done um, in maybe some shorthand ways, but this is essentially what all those different methods of calculating heart rate from an ECG are doing, uh, just maybe in some uh, shorter, slightly sloppier ways. Um, but this is the most accurate way of doing it. All right, so if you have any questions, you can put those in the comments section below. I hope this was helpful. Uh, if so, please come back and watch another video. Thanks.